put off by how long this video is. Don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. Burn Notice, The Fall of Sam Axe, Mood Review, and this is based on the extended DVD version of the aired movie. Columbia, Sam's final mission, and the year is 2005, where the show technically started in 2007, but it was set in 2006, probably. Now, Sam's mission goes wrong, and because of this, there is an informal inquiry, you know, trying to deduce why, and that's, it, it's basically the, 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 the framing device that, that's, that's how they have Sam narrating the way Mike usually does, and it's, it it helps explain. It's it's like, you know that that alias season one I think episode where they bring in Terry O'Quinn and he basically asks questions that you know viewers who are a little confused would be asking. It yeah it it lets the the protagonist then explain. Well, this is what happened. That yeah. Now, the briefly about basically Sam is there to help protect this hospital, and basically, it's you know, the the it's supposed to be doctors without borders, but I don't know if that's like if they had to pay them to say that or what they instead they say doctors for everyone or doctors for all something like that and yeah Sam goes to meet with these paramilitaries to fight this insurgent group called Espada Adiente Ardiente, sorry, the passionate sword, or as Sam keeps mistakenly referring to it as the flaming sword. And yeah, the in at the actual hospital, he meets Nikki from Lost, who I'll I'll get more into, but but yeah, she's basically she is a an aid worker charity aid worker and then there's this african-american whose name are for, i forget who's a doctor there and he tries to help them if if this were an episode of the show they would be the clients basically and i'm not gonna go into too much more of the plot be, because i'd be getting into to spoiler territory to, to briefly go into, basically, Nikki, Kiel, if that's how you pronounce it, Sanchez, I believe is her name. I, like everybody else who watched Lost and who enjoyed Lost at the time she was on, hate her and Paolo in Lost. Personally, I, I like her in most of her non-lost stuff, you know, I, I for, and, and him, you know, with, with him, it's especially, I'm, I'm not sure I've watched him too much else, but he's Xerxes in the 300 movies, and Xerxes in the first 300, in the, in the second one, they give him nothing to do, but in the first one, I mean, just that, that meeting between the, the two kings, and and the the you can just see how it burns him up that this this nothing this this 
Spartan king who, you know, puny compared to him, is just insulting him. And I love the whole the whole monologue that Xerxes gives there about how insignificant Leonidas and Sparta, you know, the it, it will be punishable by death to even mention Sparta by name and all this stuff and just the just his face just how he he shakes with fury I love that he's perfect for that role and I, I like Nikki in the non law you know, with her, I primarily think of her as the, you know, one of the, one of the three couples, the, the woman, one of the three couples that we meet in A Perfect Getaway, and this is the kind of role where, you know, she has to come off as kind of quirky and genuinely weird, you know, she sees her... I forget if they're married or if they're just, you know, her, her romantic partner. She sees him do some really messed up stuff. And then she's like, that's my guy. You know, it's, it's you know, communicating to both Steve Zahn in one of the few roles where I like him and Mila Jovovich's couple and the audience. This couple, you know... Kiel Sanchez and the awesome Timothy Oliphant, they are freaking weird, you know, are, are they, they're, they're not all there, are they, there, there's something going on here, and she just, she nails it, the, the, it's, it's the kind of role where you, you might expect an, an actress to go too far, to, to be too out there, or, you know, just just be afraid to be that weird and try to be more normal, and she just she hits it right there in the middle, absolutely perfectly. And yes, I I liked her in this as well. And it's actually, I don't think that they really gave her. They they didn't. They didn't approach it in the best way. I don't think writing her for this, because she's. She's almost Nikki in this. I mean, not not the exact same, but she's, you know, and if you've only watched her in this and Lost, and you, you know, and and Lost is fresh in your memory, and you're like, she, you know, she and Paolo went in and just took over way too much of the show and just ruined those episodes. You're gonna find her incredibly frustrating here because she's. She is a character that is going to annoy people, and that's you know, I mean, so so is Mike. So it's not it's not new for the the Burn Notice franchise to do you know a a major character who's going to really annoy some people. But you know, casting Nikki, and then you know, this this was several years after she was on Lost. So, but but yeah, it's. I, I don't know yet the the actual audience reaction that you know to to her being in the film if if there was much of one but yeah if I hadn't watched a perfect getaway and three and both three hundred movies I might have found her really 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 irritating and I can completely imagine that some did but you know if you don't she's act she's pretty funny she she fits in with the the whole snarky you know commenting on things and such that you know that that's fairly common for the the burn notice protagonists now the the movie was written the the screenplay and the story i believe both written by Matt Nix, who also created the show and wrote 16 episodes out of the 61 of the four whole seasons that had, you know, aired before this, you know, came out. And it's directed by Jeffrey Donovan, who had directed a single episode of the show before and directed three episodes of the show total. And that is everything that he's directed, and he's, of course, the star of the show. Now, the movie is, you know, usually when I do these counts, it's it's 89 and a half minutes 
if you don't count the credits and 90 minutes if you do count them because the credits are just incredibly brief and yeah I, I don't know I'm maybe they were longer when it aired on TV or maybe it was like okay people are you know when when you first watch this there were commercial breaks so and apparently I want to say it's like two hours if you if there were commercial breaks so I can imagine they you know they don't want to have people like leave near the end so they they bring right close to the to the ending you know there's not a lot of time between the movie ending and the 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 end credits being over and it was made by a lot of the same crew as the show now Bruce Campbell of course stars Sam X and basically you actually get to see him in uniform and even dress whites so that's that's really cool you know not the I, I want to say they're they're like Hawaii Hawaii shirts, Hawaiian shirts. I forget what the, the phrasing of that is, but yeah, you know, he's he's the protagonist, he's the hero, he's the good, well, good guy, good, bad. He's the guy with the gun, and the there are actually not that many really major characters that are both in this film and on the show. And the, you know, there's there's kind of a discussion about is this a burn notice film about Sam Axe or is it a Bruce Campbell film where he plays Sam Axe? I'd say there's there's some it's there's some of both, but this is very much it is very much his film, and he really it's. I mean, you know, a lot, a lot of what is Sam X is Bruce Campbell, but for Burn Notice, they tone some of it down. They make him somewhat more of a serious character than, you know, than, yeah, Bruce Campbell is known to play. And I'd say in this, they, they go closer to Bruce Campbell. I, I would say if... Yeah, if it's if it's one or the other, I'd say it's, there's there's some of both, but it's definitely more a Bruce Campbell film where he plays Sam Axe. Now, Matt Nix wanted to do this film, you know, once after season one, after the show had taken off, and everybody liked the idea of a prequel movie in theory, but you know because Hollywood. It still took them four years to get this made. Now, I have not watched much of season five yet, but apparently this introduces elements that, you know, that are in season five, and it's supposed to be kind of a lead in to season five. And I, I can't say yet. I might add an annotation by the time I have watched enough of the show. Say, currently I can't say if you need to watch this to properly follow, for example, season five of the show. The movie does basically stand on its own. You don't need to have watched the show to understand. You you get a real sense of who Sam Axe is just in the first few minutes. In you know his his introduction both you know in present time with this informal inquiry and when he you know when the the time he was doing this mission yeah, you very much get a sense of who he is, and yeah, you know, you're you're told almost immediately that he is this Navy SEAL officer, and the, 
yeah, there's there's not much more you really need to know about the character to, you know, but if you know anything about Burnt Notice, you do, of course, know that once the show starts, he is essentially retired. And, yeah, this, so, so you know, having watched the show, and that is, it is basically the idea, you know, there there are a few, you know, cute little winks and nods at the audience in this for people who watch the show, but yes, you don't need, you can go into this blind. But this is how, yeah, this is his last mission, and this is, this does explain why he stopped after, after the events in this film. And most of what this film brings up, it does resolve on its own. So, you know, if you, I'd, I'd say if, if you watch this and you like it, you'll almost definitely like the show. But if you watch this and you don't, you know, you don't want to pursue the rest of the franchise, yeah, it pretty much resolves what it brings up. Now, the, the pacing, you know, since, since this isn't the show, this isn't an episode of the show, this is a movie and it's not set, you know, it's, it's set before the events of the pilot of Burn Notice. So when the pilot happens, everything in this has already happened. It's not, you know, in between episodes or anything. So it it doesn't it doesn't have to set up stuff for much later in you know that that it's again, I don't know too much about what it's set up for season five yet, but it doesn't yeah, it doesn't really have to build too much else. It is its own thing and it's it's still fairly fast paced, but you can tell that it is its own thing, that it doesn't have you know this whole like world to really build. It doesn't it it exists it's it's just it's this one mission and then the informal inquiry about it. It's not this overall world of yeah, different different characters who work with so and so and who've done this and that it's just this one navy navy seal officer's last mission the people he meets there and yeah and where the show ran from 2007 to 2013 this came out in 2011 and thus you know when this came out it was between seasons 4 and 5 but Again, it, you know, if it had been made years earlier, I don't know, I suppose it's possible that whatever this sets up for season five, it would have set up for season two or something. And it is referenced, you know, at least in season five, possibly onwards. I, I know almost nothing about the, the seasons of the show that I haven't yet watched. Now, this sets the tone basically immediately that this, you know, there's, yeah, the, the very first thing you see is this really cool suiting up montage of, yeah, Campbell putting on his dress whites and, yeah, you know, dress whites, they, they look really cool. There's this, it's, it's. You know, it's not uniform, uniform, but it is part of the uniform. It is military. It there is this kind of authority to it and a a level of precision and such that. So yeah, you see him suit up and then he walks with with like yeah he's he's being led to this informal inquiry so 
yeah, it's, you know, he has these, like, military police or something, I think, with him. And they're, they're heading towards this gate. And that all sets up that, you know, it's, there's going to be, like, cool, smooth, you know, it, it, it doesn't in itself have action, but you get the, you know, it's, there's, it's going to be an action movie. You, you get that from it. And then they have trouble getting the gate open. And that's just the first of these, you know, kind of goofy gags in just this intro that helps set up. It's also going to be this, you know, the, the, everything surrounding, almost everything surrounding Sam Axe, especially in this is, yeah, particularly in this is goofy. There's, there's a lot of goofiness to the show's Sam Axe, but really not this much. And it, it is, you know, if, if you don't, if you're not rolling with it, the, the movie is going to frustrate you for that aspect. If you, if you don't know too much about Bruce Campbell and you, don't really expect a Bruce Campbell movie, yeah, that's that's going to annoy you, and it's going to annoy you from right away. Personally, I quite enjoyed it. I, I do find the, the goofy Bruce Campbell shtick, you know, here or elsewhere. You know, I've, I've, I've watched the Evil Dead trilogy, I've watched all of Xena. I don't remember if I watched all of Hercules, The Legendary Journeys, but Back when it was on TV, I probably made sure to watch his episodes because I do really like Autolycus. So, yeah, I'm I'm quite into his shtick. And really, the the one thing that did kind of bother me a little bit about how he is in this is that once he then faces these you know, Navy officers, he's very casual with them. He, the, you know, the way he's sitting in the chair and his, I, he like unbuttons his dress whites and, and it's like sitting, it's, it's like the, you know, in, in like in high school and there's that kid who doesn't play by the rules and he's, he's not gonna sit up straight even though the teacher is telling. And it's just, on the show, he's very much established as when it comes to actual U.S. authority figures, he does show some respect. You know, he encounters this, I, I forget, I want, a congressman, he's not a senator, but a congressman, and even though they are having a difficult time working with this congressman, he still serves him, and he very much kind of, he tries to show some respect despite the fact that he's, you know, basically no longer a Navy SEAL. It, you know, if he's not under obligation to. It's it's a professional courtesy kind of thing that he still, you know, and he, yeah, with this congressman, he's like, Congressman, please, sir, you have to understand, even though he's clearly very frustrated, and we know that when he gets frustrated, yeah, he's he's not going to be the most. He's 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 not necessarily going to take great care not to insult someone or such, but he does have respect for, yeah, you know, officers and you know, America just you know, government officials and such. And I, I get that, you know, it was, they're, they're making it very much a Bruce Campbell movie. I feel like that aspect would have been better served that, the, you know, they, they have some jokes with the, the officers themselves as well. But yeah, I'd say that it would, it would have worked better. It would have felt more in line with the show and his characterization on there if where where again he can be very goofy and in this he's goofy in very serious dangerous situations also and that again just doesn't quite feel he is 
he's he's goofy and he can be silly and, and not always take things seriously but when there's a real threat on the show he takes that seriously he doesn't he doesn't play around when yeah now the the actual introduction when he's first asked when did you first when when did you get this mission and he's like well you know should i start at the very beginning because some people are going to say that's where it started and basically you know not a spoiler it happens you know minutes into it basically he you know he's with this woman as he often is on the show and she's very into him as they often are on the show you know he is he is charming and then it turns out that she's married and that's where it also that's that's something i really like there immediately as he would on the show he says that's not cool i don't help i i don't cheat on anyone and i don't help anyone cheat you didn't tell me that you should have told me that 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 i really like that that's you know that they they easily could have made a joke out of that but they stuck to his characterization on the show and then the husband comes home and comes home and it's that kind of cliche you know oh no my husband is home no no don't go that way go that way oh there's a dog and it just it's it's amusing enough and then it you know it turns out that her husband is an admiral and he quickly figures out that you know that it was yeah, yeah basically the the wife tells him who it was and there's this you know he's like how could you possibly not you're 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 a navy seal you're trained in battlefield awareness how did you miss my name on the on the mailbox and that's that's kind of funny and yeah and because of that the the admiral sends him on this really kind of hopeless mission of yeah as as described before where you know they don't know when the insurgents might make a move it you know he's there's there's a real in, implication that it might be months before anything happens and he's just there to you know just until things are resolved and what what is that you know un, until they can figure out what the heck is going on and the there's this when when he's flown down there the first thing you know we we hear this rock song and then we see this military vehicle and it's like somebody just watched iron man and the there is like on the show there's of course guerrilla warfare it's this kind of thing it's, you know yeah if i'm i'm not going to talk about how things end up in that way or what in that way even means but you know you knew it wasn't just going to be that he's he's an officer of the military and everything goes as planned you know obviously something happens it's it's burn notice we wouldn't want just a movie of yeah and it's it's made clear that they don't actually know very much about this insurgent group going in and you know i i talked a little bit about nikki before you know yeah she's excuse me she she is very snarky but you know she's fine she's fine she doesn't blow my mind but and the there's this thing of he's not 
he's not that good at Spanish. It's been a while since he, you know, he, it's, he's basically shipped to Colombia overnight. It's it's just, you know, because the Admiral really wants to, you know, to put him in a, in a bad position. And it's, you know, it, I... I feel like that's probably a reference to Mike also not being that good at Spanish. Among the the characters are this very angry bilingual teenager who has yeah I, sh I shouldn't say but she's she's involved with what's going on in some way now i the show itself is always very sleek and you know you've got pretty fairly big really cool things happening you know, lots of guns, big guns, stunt driving. I don't know if, you know, it's when you're when you're producing a show versus when you're producing a movie, it's different. And I don't know how the budget was on this compared to, say, an episode, say, the pilot or one of the season finales or season premieres. But this does feel somewhat low budget compared to the show. The I, I saw a few critics quotes and some said it was like a direct to video action sequel and yeah, it I, if 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 I'd only watched this and I didn't know there was a show, I would have assumed that there were other movies and this was just one of the later ones that they did when they were you know when they still had the license but when they didn't have as much money to keep making them and and such you know it really you would expect it to be on yeah at, at something of a higher you know there there are you know, I, I, I'm not sure where they filmed it, but I can imagine they, they just picked a place that looks like Colombia and was relatively inexpensive to shoot. And, you know, they do have, there, there are a lot of people in the film. You know, this, this military, you know, unit or whatever. Yeah, there are a lot of people there and they do all they're all in uniform, they all have guns and such, and there are several vehicles, and there are some stunts, but yeah, on the whole, it doesn't feel that big. And the... The, the climax feels a tad small. And that more or less covers the, as you know, a lot of more recent prequels have this. I, I don't know if, if it started with the Star Wars prequels, but the Star Wars prequels were very, you know, big offenders in this way. Prequels try to explain, you know, try to say, you know, this was how this started and this was the origin of that. This is very restrained in that respect and I really appreciate that. There are a few things where it's like, well, this is, you know, this is how that happened and such, but it's not like they they didn't have a list of things. That's, I forget, maybe it was, 
I, I forget who says this about in their video review of like the the X-Men Origins Wolverine movie but clearly they had like a, a list of things that they were like okay this is this is where he got that this is how this happened every single little thing has its origin placed in the movie and it gets absolutely ridiculous and here they cut it down to just a few things when really they could have yeah they they could have gone in with a list they could have said okay these are all the things we need to establish and it it really doesn't and it is to the it's very much to the film's benefit that decision please comment thumbs up and subscribe for more content